Hello, I'm Legendary, and this is The Last Case of Benedict Fox, a Metroidvania set in a Lovecraftian detective noir world. It was developed by Plot Twist and published by Rogue Games Inc. Hello? Anyone here? Only anguish fills this residence, Benedict. I got a bad feeling about this. Let me make this clear to start. I never go into a game with the intent to dislike it. If I'm playing something, it's because it looked interesting and caught my attention. So, with that out of the way, I have to say it, this game is not good. The last case of Benedict Fox has a really cool premise. You seem to be a detective in a post-World War I jazz noir setting, accompanied by a Cthulhu-like creature who occupies your mind. You find out that your father dug too deep into research of the occult and wound up dead in the basement of his mansion, where you begin your investigation. Let's start with the positives. The art direction and the setting of The Last Case of Benedict Fox are the reason most people have it on their radar. The off-kilter design of the world, the unsettling atmosphere, the creeping feeling that you're never actually alone or safe, these are all what we came for, and these are present in the game, but that proficient use of style does not make up for all the shortcomings in the rest of the game. Voice acting is a thing. This game has it. I kinda wish it didn't, at least for the English version of the main character Benedict. I have no idea what the direction for those voices, but it definitely isn't gritty detective haunted by Cthulhu whose father just mysteriously died. It's much closer to Tommy Wise's own impersonator reads phone numbers from the yellow pages while enjoying a cup of tea. There is such an unreasonably large gap between the direction of the voice of Benedict and the other voices that it becomes comical. I know that Plot Twist Games is based in Poland, but it's hard to imagine that their English correspondents heard this and decided that this should be the leading voice in one of their largest markets. You got that thing I asked you about? I got you, kid. Notes of a madman. Or a genius. Or both. So, there was a time when the house was filled with joy. As a reminder, yes, I did say that this is a Metroidvania game. You begin in the mansion searching for clues, but then with the help of your tentacle-laden friend, you're able to jump into Limbo, the space between life and death where the memories of your late father reside. This is where most of the action takes place. In the mansion, the majority of the gameplay is puzzle solving, and I use the puzzle solving term lightly as they're more progress blockers than puzzles. In order to explore more of the mansion, you have to find the clues in the limbo world of your dad's memory that open locked desk drawers or locked doors in the real world. The solutions are simple and practically handed to you on a silver platter, you just have to reach the point in the story where the game actually tells you what to do rather than figuring out anything for yourself. In limbo space, you get to flex Benedict's muscles and do some combat exercises. The movement and traversal mechanics Benedict has access to feel extremely stiff, almost to the point of making the game feel unplayable. Jumping and ledge clambering are poorly designed, and the distance you can actually jump feels inconsistent at best. You have to time your button press perfectly at the exact moment you reach the edge of a platform, or else you'll plummet like a rock. You also have to hold A for more heightened distance, but it only adds about an inch either direction, which leads me to question why this is even a function in the first place. The basic failings of the control scheme extends to combat. You attack with your knife by pressing X, execute a heavy attack by holding X, parry with the right bumper, dodge with the right stick, and shoot your flare gun with the left bumper plus X. There are no rebindings, so what you see is what you get. When I tell you that the dodge being tied to the right stick rather than the left stick plus a face button is a problem, trust me, it is. The attack animations are rigid, and you cannot flow from a light attack into a heavy attack. The heavy attack also feels pretty useless, as it takes way too long to charge up, leaving you vulnerable for almost a full two seconds. Parrying never feels right either. The enemies flash a white icon telling you that an attack is incoming, but the attack that follows has no particular timing attached to it. If you hit your parry button when the icon flashes, you will get hit. You need to wait for what feels like ages after the icon appears for the enemy to actually rear back and attack you. And your parry has no positive feedback. There's no impact or reactivity to indicate that it was successful, besides the fact that Benedict hasn't been knocked to the floor. This all comes to a head in a boss battle early in the game. The boss in question has a head hidden in the background and two tentacles that sprout from the ground on either side. For starters, there is no boss health bar. Your progress is basically impossible to measure. It starts with one tentacle that you need to attack using your knife. Your gun gets more ammunition from attacking enemies with a knife. As you swing away, it will mark the ground in red to indicate that an attack is incoming. You can try to parry, but as I said before, the timing is super sloppy. If you try to dodge, you might not even make it outside the range of the attack. 
I'm not sure if there are invincibility frames on the dodge or not, but it feels like there probably aren't. With your measly four hit points, you are expected to attack this tentacle and perfectly parry about five attacks in a row until a second tentacle sprouts from the other side. And then the other tentacle begins lobbing projectiles, which also need to be parried. Did I mention that the parry is not omnidirectional? If you try to block damage from one side, you will get locked in the animation and smacked from the other side before you even get the chance to react. It all comes down to luck. And if you die, you can't just repeat the fight from where you started. You get put half a mile back down the hallway you came from and have to run all the way there again. I finished the boss after about four frustrating attempts and felt no excitement at all. Getting punished for the game's bad combat implementation and RNG is not fun in the slightest. But okay, maybe I'm being too harsh, maybe it's a skill issue as the kids say. So let's talk about the rest of the game. The map is serviceable but it isn't great, it's zoomed in way too far when you open it and doesn't make finding what you're looking for easy. Using fast travel is actually pretty slow as load times are uncommonly long for a game of this scope and running between zones causes hitches and frame dips, another sign of poor load optimization. You can also get attacked by enemies who are off screen, which makes the laggy transitions even more of a pain. I really have been looking forward to the release of this game for several months now, and I'm sad to say that I was absolutely let down by it. I'm so bummed out that it couldn't even get the basic gameplay mechanics down when it looked so promising. I couldn't put up with the controls and the combat design for more than a couple of hours before I put the controller down and gave up. Much like the narrative of the cosmic horror stories that inspired this game, I was steadily driven to madness by it. I cannot recommend playing The Last Case of Benedict Fox.